Oi, oi, Steven. It's Episcopal Squirrel here, also known as Alchemage. Here to do another morning dab with Mage. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. My mind's not the greatest of places. I had a really rough night of sleep. Very uh, intense nightmares. Quite intense. Uh, woke up several times and I wrote it down, so. I'll go over them throughout the day and try and figure out what happened, what was going on in my head. But, you know, I'm going to do my best to not let that bring my day down. Sometimes it's really hard. Today's going to be one of those days, but... Anyway, today I would like to talk to you all about cannabis and genetic modification of it, or the possible genetic modification of it, what's going on with the high THC contents. But first, a word from our sponsors. Cheers. I really don't have any sponsors. If you want a sponsor me to take take your dabs and fucking talk about how awesome your dabs are, hit me up. I'm the dude to do it. <coughs> so, <coughs> last night, <coughs> my neighbor and I were going over well, he asked me about <coughs> GMOs and whether I think that GMOs are inherently wrong and, or bad. And <coughs> I personally don't think that GMOs are inherently wrong or bad. <coughs> I think that the way that they're being used by Monsanto, they're fucked. They're horrible. It's doing a lot of really bad stuff to the human genome. But as far as GMOs in general, like actually genetically modified organisms, not just selective breeding and cross-pollination, but actual like uh, laboratory manipulation of the genetic code, gene splicing, that is genetic, genetic modification. Um, it used to be um, to where even cross-pollination was considered GMO. But recently, uh, with a lot of the uh, legal debates and everything going on, they've really defined uh, GMOs as uh, genetic gene splicing. Gene splicing, in it. So just like laboratory manipulation, not just like shit that can happen actually in nature. Cross-pollination and natural selection is something that happens without us. So, Anyways, so when it comes to cannabis, there's been a, a lot of rumors about GMO weed being created by Monsanto or just in general laboratory manipulation of cannabis in order to produce these super potent uh, uh, cannabinoids and these high, um, high testing cannabis products. Um, you know, back in the 60s, it wasn't uncommon to find cannabis that was in the range of like 5% THC. And nowadays, we're having cannabis that is consistently at a um, 20 plus. You know, we have shit that's over 30% THC now. And so, what's really interesting is that during that same time, you could still find cannabis that was upwards of 15%. 15% was like the really high stuff. But that was like, you know, the Acapulco Gold or the Thai Stick, you know? And so, <clears throat> I did a little bit of research uh, because, you know, I was wondering myself to see exactly, exactly what uh, went on with that. And so, the cannabis grown in the States was very weak, um, but the cannabis grown outside of the States was quite strong. And so... Doing a little bit of research, I found that THC, any 
So cannabis grows all across the entire world, has always grown across the entire world, just naturally, abundantly. The thing is, though, the cannabis plants that have developed any kind of THC molecule have all evolved in high UV areas, either equatorial uh, areas or in the mountains, in the high, uh, high altitudes. And so you have, you had at one point where Mexican weed was the shit you wanted to smoke, but now the American industry has put that fucking shit to the kibosh because we just, we know what the fuck we're doing. We know how to grow it and we know how to grow it well. We know how to grow it well in mass amounts. And so now... Yeah, so, <laughs> I lost my, my train of thought there for a second. So, so now, the reason that we're able to have such strong, potent cannabis isn't because it's genetically modified. It's through years and years and years and generations of uh, selective breeding. So, with selective breeding and cross-pollination, you're able to take <clears throat> from an entire crop one plant that you like that produces the, the strongest and clone it, you know? And you can clone this plant over and 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 over, and over selectively choosing the qualities from that ge genetic makeup, that genetic mapping, that you want to see increase. The, uh, the, and so, like, the, the possibilities of that trait becoming stronger happens with each uh, each generation and so <clears throat> but but the more you like clone a plant the, the more uh, wacky its uh, genetic makeup gets and you start to get some funky plants after um, after a while um, but it takes a while you know you can clone a plant for quite a while before it starts to do that so anyway <clears throat> So yeah, so you have selective breeding, and then you have the cross-pollination. And that's where you take two plants of different genomes, and you have a male and a female of one, and you pollinate the, the pollen from the male into the female so that you can produce seeds. And that seed is a cross of both of those plants. <clears throat> and that's where you see, like, uh, uh, Blue Dream is... Uh, I can't even think of off the top of my head. I'm very, very uh, uneducated in the, the strains and what they are um, actually, like the genetic makeup of them. But, so also, so yeah, so, you're not smoking GMO weed. You're smoking years and generations worth of knowledge and people coming together and just really knowing what the fuck they know, uh, are doing when it comes to growing cannabis. So something else that I discovered while doing this research was there is a scientist named Mowgli Holmes who was the head of, um, what was it called, the Cannabis Genome Project at uh, Philo's, P-H-Y-L-O-S uh, Institute, something. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyways, if you look up Mowgli Holmes uh, Cannabis Genome Project, uh, it will come up. And um, what, his, what his team is doing is <clears throat> working to map the, uh, the cannabis genome. And they're doing this to put it in the public domain. And they're doing this to, quote, piss off Monsanto. <laughs> because this way, it makes it more difficult for Monsanto to be able to, um, to monetize certain strains. And so, it's great. It's great to see that someone out there is working against Monsanto and doing what they can to 
create public access to all this information. So, if you know some more about GMO weed that I have not included in this video, I would love to know it. I did not spend hours of research looking up GMO weed. Just a brief search. And the brief amount of information that I found sufficed. The, uh, the answer, or the question that, uh, that arose. But again, if you have any more information that is contradiction, tra contradictory or supportive of what I have stated, please feel free to share it down in the comments. I want to see what you guys have to say, and I want to hear your opinions, too. Do you think that mapping the genome publicly is going to be a good thing? Or do you think that Monsanto will still be able to use the cannabis plant and monetize it? Regardless of your opinions, I love you guys. Have a good day, Steven.